Hey Year 12s, um, I just wanted to quickly go through some stuff today that we covered in class um, just so we don't forget anything uh, because like I said before this is really port important. Um, so right here we're looking at the anaerobic and anaer aerobic glycolysis and like we were learning about today um, the fate of the pyruvic acid determines whether we call it anaerobic glycolysis, so when there's not enough oxygen present, or aerobic glycolysis, when we are getting sufficient oxygen. So remembering here that, sorry, my mark is being funny. Um, remembering here that the, gluco the breakdown of glucose and converting that into pyruvic acid creates ATP. Now, if there's enough oxygen present, that pyruvic acid is in, converted into acetyl coenzyme A, okay? And that it happens within the mitochondria. However, if there's not enough oxygen present, then what happens is that pyruvic acid is converted, or one of the byproducts is, is lactic acid, okay? So, as the lactic acid in, in the muscles increases, um, it can then spill out into the bloodstream. Now, like I was saying, we always have a little bit of blood lactate in our bloodstream, but when it reaches four millimoles um, per litre, that's, that's what we call the onset of blood lactate accumulation. So like it says here, obviously in that scenario, we would be predominantly relying on the um, lactic acid system or the anaerobic glycolysis system if we were seeing um, the onset of blood lactate accumulation. And if that were to continue to rise, we would really be heavily relying on that um, anaerobic glycolysis system. Remembering as well that um, with the increase in lactic acid, it interferes with the ability um, of the fuels needed Oh, hang on, that doesn't make sense. Um, it basically interferes with muscle contraction, okay, because what happens is it increases the acidity of the muscle. Um, so going back over here in the mitochondria, we call that kind of the powerhouse of the cell. We have sufficient oxygen present, like I was saying before, pyruvic acid converted into acetyl coenzyme A. It then enters um, this sort of, I think there's about uh, nine different chemical reactions that happen um, within the Krebs cycle, but that also produces ATP. Uh, and then effectively what we have um, is the electron transport chain also creates a sufficient or a significant amount of ATP. Like I was saying before, this, um, the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, you don't necessarily need to know too much about, but you really definitely, definitely need to know about the onset. I'm going to get a highlighter here. You definitely need to know about the onset of blood lactate accumulation and you need to, you need to know basically all this stuff here. Cool. But I think it's important you understand that that plays a role as well, but it's not necessarily a huge focus in the exam, but this stuff here is. Okay, thanks. If you have any questions, just email me on sector. Um, cool, I hope you've liked this video.